let's have a look at what we've got access to today. The first thing you need to remember is that AI is here to stay. It ain't going anywhere. And schools really need to be early adopters. They really, really need to be early adopters on this and not turn the back and walk away from it. And they need to embrace it as a teaching tool. Teachers need to decide how and when to include it in lessons. And schools need the provision in place to allow them to use AI. If they don't have that provision in place, they're going to find it very difficult to use any sort of AI tools at all. This is a comment that really jumped out from the CEO of the Raspberry Pi Foundation. And he said, uh, children from all backgrounds need to engage with AI and help reduce the di digital divide. We've messed this up before with digital skills. Let's not do it again. I've been saying that for about 13 years that we messed up with di di digital skills massively. And AI is here now, so let's not uh, mess up with that one. We need to embrace it and we need to use it. The problem is that AI has posed more questions than answers. And this is just a list that I created from some of the courses and some of the reading I've done. So what do we tell children about AI? What we should not tell children about AI how do we introduce it? How do we include it in lessons? Should it be used in computer lessons only? What platforms do we use? What year groups should have access to it? How will the school manage it? Should children have access to it at all? And I thought long and hard about AI. We've had access to it here for quite a while. And um, I thought long and hard about enabling it and then I did a course about using it as a teaching tool and that completely changed the way I thought about it because previously previous to that I just thought AI and children is a cheating tool it will allow children to cheat doing exams and doing lessons not if it's used properly not if it's introduced so there are two aspects to AI at the moment there's teaching AI and there's teaching with AI so using AI as a teaching tool. The courses I've done have come out really clear and lots of things they want you to tell children or not tell children. You should not talk about AI as if it was human. It isn't human. And they, they've impressed that really, really badly. They want you not to talk about AI as if it's human. They want you to avoid using certain words like AI learns and AI is human-like. It isn't. AI at the moment doesn't learn. It probably will do in the future, but the only way AI learns at the moment is from large language modules, large blocks of data that's fed in, which AI will analyze. And then an algorithm will allow it to produce a human-like response to questions. So it's not human. There's a the question of fairness and transparency and bias and safety concerns. These are big questions for asking about AI at the moment about whether it is fair, whether it's transparent, and whether there's a bias there. Uh, accuracy is another one they want you to talk about. And it's not just about accuracy within the results. Think about accuracy and self-driving cars. So there are very good, I've had access to um, Google Deep, DeepMind, which allowed me to train some AI to do certain things. And it's fascinating to watch it learn uh, from your inputs. So, an accuracy you can see is really, really important. And you, they need you to tell you that AI at the moment is programmed by humans. It's not programmed by itself, it's programmed by humans. And AI is in use everywhere. And that's another thing they need, need you to talk about if you're going to start doing the teaching. I'm just working through creating maybe a bespoke lesson for this, which I'll possibly use for year six. But at the moment, uh, I'm still sort of learning myself. So, how are you going to use it as a teaching tool? Well, the first thing you need to do is choose a platform. And that will depend very much on what provision your school's got in place. If it's got Google Workspace for Education in place, you can use Gemini. If you've got Office 365, you can use Copilot. If you've got neither of these, then what you're going to do, you'll need to sign up 
a load of accounts on something like ChatGP or create a load of Gmail accounts for children to use. Not a great idea. You then need to decide how you want AI to interact with your class. And um, you're going to be using AI to enhance your lesson. Text to image is a, a brilliant starting point. And I'll give you some examples of that in a minute. It's a brilliant, brilliant starting point with AI. And Canva is brilliantly suited to this. Um, and using AI as a chatbot and a friendly teaching assistant, which we're going to see how that works in a minute. Uh, if you're going to do that, then you need to get the first prompt absolutely right because that will set the chatbot up in a particular mode. You need to be able to control access to AI. So at the moment, we can switch AI on or off or we can switch it on for particular year groups and off for particular year groups. At the moment, it's on for everybody. And if you are going to use AI to create a resource, then you need to link uh, that result generated to a worksheet and make sure children are doing some work from that resource. We're just looking at uh, the moment of using it uh, with SEN children and using the, uh, the built-in reader. Choose your platform and that will depend, as I've just said, what permission your school's got in place. And then uh, once you've done that, you're going to decide how you're going to use it in your lesson. Then you're going to create a series of prompts for children to use. Creating the prompts are really important because that will completely set the chatbot up in exactly the way you want it set up. Don't let the children do it. These are some really quick examples. This is Colorize. Um, there's no login for this. It's just a website and it uses AI to colorize pictures. Uh, we did this for the, this is year four's work. And we started using AI very simply. There's also another one called the Magic Arrays, which is really good, which is, uh, very much like the magic arrays on um, a Google phone. And it just allows you to paint over different parts of the the, uh, the picture and it will be erased out and uh, it looks like it was never there before. So they're, they're two great AI tools that you could use straight away. No login is required and you can get children to start to uh, colorize some black and white pictures. This is where it shines. So this is a year three project and this was an image created from canva uh, text to image so the lesson planning behind this is just one small section of the, of the lesson planning but the idea was that children had to think of a book that they wanted to write so they've created a book cover using ai so text to image ai they created this book cover as you can see here and then they created a title for the book and then they did a book review on it um, so you generated the artwork from AI, but they had to use their imagination to create the book review and work out what the book was about. Here's another one called The Heist. Um, Kensig had created a really brilliant book cover for this and he's also created an absolutely brilliant book review for it. The book review is fantastic. So again, the cover's made with AI on Canva, uh, but they had to sit down and create the book review for it and write that. So what did children say about using AI? Oh, well, they loved it. I'm going to show you what, what we did with children in a minute. And um, when we asked for comments, things like, I would like to use it again. It's good how you can ask it more questions. It's good, I can listen to it. And if you don't understand it, you can play it again. I really liked it. So we had a whole lesson where children generated a resource sheet for the BBC Microbit. They sat there with headphones on and we used the, um, the voice generator within AI uh, to play back so that you could listen to what was being, being generated. And then they did um, a worksheet based on that resource sheet. And nearly all children said they would like to use it in other lessons. Well, getting the first prompt right. So getting children to create their own resource with a chatbot. Well, some really important things you've got to remember about this. Um, getting the first prompt right this will put the chatbot into correct mode and then you create a prompt sheet for children to use this will make sure they cover all the things you want them to ask so you link the ai generated resource to a worksheet so you make sure they're actually doing a worksheet from that resource you've created and you encourage children to ask further questions this was a uh, worksheet for sutton who and you can see the first prompt here 
You are a friendly teaching assistant working with children of nine years old. That's the key. That first prompt, that first line, you are a friendly teaching assistant. Now let's set it up as a teaching assistant now and it's also set the age of the child. So the child is nine years old and it says, can you help them learn about Sutton Who? Give them some information and ask if they want to answer some questions. And this is what it started to generate. And then there were further questions that children asked. So let's hop out of this. Let's go and take a look at how we're going to use AI to create a resource sheet. Right, I'm back on um, Google Classroom now. So I'm back on Peppa Pig's account, the introduction to the BBC Microbit. And I've got two things to do with AI. The first thing I've got is a Google Doc, which has got the prompts that I want children to use with um, with AI. So I'll just zoom in a little bit, go to 125. You'll see that um, the first prompt, again, very important, you are a friendly teaching assistant and I want you to help me learn about the BBC micro bit. So that sets it up as a teaching assistant. I'm only eight years old, so please make it as simple as possible. And can you leave spaces so I can ask questions? That's the first prompt. The second prompt is what sensors do you have? Then it's going to ask, then the child's going to ask, can you tell me how to code it? Then it's going to ask, what is the microprocessor it uses and how much memory does it have? And can you explain how it makes use of input, process and output? So they are the prompts that we're going to get children to use. So the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to copy the prompt. So I'm going to highlight it, right click and copy. Then I'm going to go back to Google Classroom and I'm going to click on the link for Gemini. So this is Gemini. This is uh, previously called Google Bard. Uh, Google recently renamed it within the last two days actually to Gemini. Um, it's been developed all the time. Shortly this, um, in the next few months, there's going to be uh, image generation and video generation available on here. But what we're going to do now is we're just going to drop the prompt in there. So we've now got the prompt in and we're going to now submit the prompt. And um, Bard will now go off and create some resources for me. So if I'm not happy with the first one, I can now go to the second one. If I'm not happy, I can go to the next draft. So I think I'll choose draft two. So this now gives me some information, but what we can now do with this is we can now click on listen. And this is what children were doing in the IT suite. They had the headphones on, and they generated the resource and then they click listen. Of course, I'm happy to be your friendly teaching assistant and help you explore the amazing world of the BBC Micro bit. Remember, there are no silly questions, so feel free to ask anything that pops into your head. Imagine the Micro bit is a tiny computer that fits right in your hand. It has buttons, lights, and even sensors that can detect things like movement and touch. But the coolest part is that you can program it to do all sorts of fun things. Okay, you can see where it's going to with this. It starts to talk about so what you can do with it, uh, how you how you code it, sort of things it's got on board. So if you now go back to the prompt and we say, well, what sensors does it have? We can now click copy, go back to Gemini, go back down to the bottom, paste that prompt in, and present it to Bard sorry to Gemini again and it will now come back with all the sensors so again we can now play it the micro bit has some super cool sensors that let it see and feel the world around it here are the main ones motion sensor this guy can tell how you're moving the micro bit like shaking it tilting it or even spinning it around imagine making a game where you tilt the micro bit to guide a character okay i think you get the idea of what's going on there so imagine let me just go and pull this oh, have i got any more on here oh sorry let me just um pull up what we were doing again as you can see um i've already generated it will remember all the things that you generate 
and this is the Sutton Who one. So this is the Sutton Who that we, we generated earlier on. And as you can see, uh, I think on the second prompt, it says, can you tell me about the boat that was buried, why it survived so long, and can you include some pictures? And there it is again. So we click on play on there. Of course, the buried boat at Sutton Who is pretty incredible, right? It's called the Sutton Who ship and it's the biggest and most complete Anglo-Saxon ship ever found. Here's how it managed to stick around for so long. Okay, so that again is about Sutton Who, nothing to do with computing. And at this time it's include uh, a load of photographs and explain how the ship survived. So that's how you would use it. If you go back to the BBC Microbit one we've just generated again. So this is the one that we've just done. And the important thing is if you go back to Google Classroom, and we now open up this document and we now click on just 25% as you can see this is now linked to um, that resource sheet so it's asking a number of questions and it's also linked to the keywords so children have got two resources now to answer that res uh, that um, that worksheet so the BBC Microbit is a piece of hardware you go back it's the bbc micro bit a piece of hardware or software so all they've got to do is either listen to what um gemini has said to them or go through the um the keyword sheet so that's pretty much how we're going to be using ai at the moment um it's early days for mi and uh, ai in education it's a brilliant brilliant tool there's no doubt about it and it's going to go really far and schools definitely need to be early adopters of this technology you need to get on board now don't turn the back on it and walk away like they did with cloud platforms and 21st century environments get on it now and use it but of course the schools that you will go in into vary tremendously and if they don't have the resources in place and already up and running they're going to find it very difficult to use something like ai we're going to develop it here. We're going to start looking at the possibilities now we're going to use it. I've already talked to the SAN teachers here and they're, they're quite keen on getting their children to use this because a lot of the children have their own Chromebook here so they'll have direct access to AI and we're just working out how we're going to use it. That's it. That's the end of this presentation. In a minute we're going to take a break now and in a minute we're going to pull in year six and you're going to sit down and watch them design and um, create some websites you can ask all sorts of questions about that uh, you can join in if you want to and then straight after that uh, year three will be in and you can watch them and join in creating some branching databases uh, okay thank you for this and um, it's time to take a break and we'll see you again soon <laughs>